What's up, guys? Back in me is where the Fosters season two, episode twenty-one, end of the beginning. Okay, so episode start. So this episode starts off with with with, with Brandon saying how long is he gonna have his room until the baby's born, which is six weeks. So Brandon's like, I have to give up his room for six weeks, and then Anna comes down. So yeah. So yeah. So the so, so Callie. So they start talking, he's just even there, but Callie, let's talk about the Callie stuff. Callie goes over to Robert, and we find out that Sophia is in this episode. After not seeing her for a long time, she's finally back, and not seeing her since episode 12 or 13, or 14, 15, I don't know, 20. But yeah, probably episode, I don't know, 20, I forget, but yeah, anyway. But yeah, so she said that she has personality, she has a personality disorder, and yeah, and basically, Cal basically Callie's grandfather, Callie's grandfather comes over, which Sophia calls Papa, but I'm not going to call him that, I'm just going to call him Robert's father, Robert Sr., and he's, and he and Robert are basically in like a, he, he, Callie, Cal, his wife, him, Jill, Robert Sr.'s wife, Mom, and Robert Sr. and his wife Monica and Callie and Sophia all of Dent all talk and he's basically like about how, about how, about how, about how Sophia like writing, but Sophia's like, she just doesn't feel it anymore and, and, and she's like, and he starts saying about how much Robert put Callie through and starts talking about now. She likes the current foster home that she's in, but he's making love with her, and she's like, and she's like, how does that feel about Sophia? And she's, and, and he's like, I like Sophia, 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 no, he, they like, they like Sophia and Kyle the same, and Sophia even like, yeah, she likes having a sister, and he kind of mentions how Sophia tried to kill herself, which is kind of dark to bring into the storyline. Is just seen. So yeah, so he said about how about how it's his fault why Cal he had to leave Callie and his mom and her mom and he's like he can't turn back. Time Robert, you made a mistake and you're even putting Callie through H L L. So yeah, so Callie is talking with Robert about how about how even the fathers are her family and even though they're her family. He's still gonna be her dad, and basically, he gets a call from his lawyer about Callie's emancipation, which I knew would happen. He's definitely talked to Callie about getting emancipated with Robert, where they have to lie to Robert, and he he wouldn't find out about it. But guess what? Stephanie, you were wrong. Robert did find out about it, and yeah, and they're like, there's nothing. And Stephanie, you know, like, he, and she's like, they talked to. What did he say? After he found, he's like, nothing. He took her home, and he's like, and he's like, there's nothing you can do. So Callie goes inside, and he's like, he's nothing, there's nothing you can do, and Steph's like, I didn't want to scare her, and Selena's like, she's already scared, so basically, Robert goes, and withdraws his suit for custody, because he doesn't want to be like his father, and he really resonated with Callie said about her being, him being her dad, so yeah, so now let's talk about the Jude stuff, so Jude, so since Connor came out to his dad about being gay, he wants to keep Jude, Jude and him apart, blaming Jude for the reason why his son is gay. So, because he still thinks Jude's gay, I don't get why. So, he he wants to keep Jude out, even when Jude wa walks in with that blue nail polish. So, yeah, but, but yeah, so Connor calls him, yeah, and he's like, he, I'm going for a coffee run, he better be out, or he's calling security. So, yeah, so Jude says that the, that you know, that they that he and Connor aren't friends, and he's like they feel more than friends. And about how he uh, there was no girl, he they make kiss, and they feel more than friends. And he's like, and Jude says Connor told his dad, and yeah, so Connor goes into Connor goes in, Jude goes in, and he's like, and he's like, what's that? And Jude's like, war paint. So basically, so Callie's like, so at Mario on the dance recital, which I'll dance, dance teams. Thing, which I'll talk about, Connor 
Jude's like, how's Connor? And Con Jude's like, he's my boyfriend. Which is like, go Jude, you cut her. Finally, John her. And, uh, and this made me happy. But let's talk about the Mariana stuff. So Mariana is 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 getting ready for the dance team when she accidentally trips on his skateboard, injuring her knee. Yeah, he's used, you should know not to leave a skateboard around the house. But it injured Mariana, but it injures Mariana. And Mariana is too tired and has to find a way to do a second dance. Talk about how Anna wants to keep her baby and she's and she can't do it because of Mariana. And about how Mariana and how mom will listen if she if she does if if she says she wants baby. But Mariana is at the dance recital. At the dance rehearsal when Mariana's like when Kaylin makes it we say break a leg, Mariana. But you it looks like you already did that. God, Kingman's not coming back for this show. But anyway, yeah, because she's a garbage character. So, yeah. This looks like Tia's last appearance. So, Mariana does like a digital dancer with some video game controller and Emma. Genius. And, yeah. And they basically win. They also, because, they did this because typical Kingman's team steals Mariana's dystopian robot theme idea. So, Mariana has to do the digital dance idea. So, but Mario wins anyway. So, yeah. So Brandon, so Brandon and Lou are broken up. He basically, comes to Mike about how he wanted to go on tour, but he wanted to go on Iron Wild. But he's like, he's like, Lou's, we're done. Him and Lou's, he says, Lou's, we're done. So he and Lou are broken up. And he, and he, unfortunately, Brandon does enough. Talks to Lou, and Lou's like, and Lou's like, hey Brandon, you could go to Idlewild, then you could come on tour, but then she's like, come on tour with me, like, and then she kisses him. So, I kind of thought this scene was weird, how Lou's like, go to Idlewild, go to Idlewild, come tour with her, but, so yeah, so they kiss with Brandon, so Brandon does the thing for Mrs. Tor Terry Anderson, the person that I wild and yeah. So while he's doing it, Lena and it, not Lena. Anna feels the baby coming and and they get hit by a car and that and while the celebrating Cali gets stuck gets a reported police accident, reported fatality, and yeah. So now yeah, now that I was just shocked by this ending. But yeah, we gotta talk about the Lena Monty stuff. So Lena and Monty drink it up, get boozed, and basically kiss. So yeah. They basically kiss. And because because Steph is doing a lot of stuff. typical stuff that Steph is doing a lot of stuff without Lena's acknowledgement. Typical stuff. And Lena just kisses well, I don't know. Monty kisses Lena. Lena kisses Monty. It seems like Monty kisses Lena. But what? But what do I know? And yeah. So what? So basically, that wraps up the that wraps up season two of the Fosters. I guess this one. I I didn't like this season as well as I thought I did. It just. It's just keep, as you keep rewatching season two, it's just it's just it just gets you know like I just thought Mariana got good. She got, she was annoying at the beginning because you know she wanted to prove that she was to the dance team, and then after she turned her hair back to black, she became cool again. But then when the whole and then the baby thing just got her annoying again. But I don't know what they're gonna do in season three. Actually, I know what they're gonna do. I just watched the episode by the time. I'm making this video, but yeah, so, so yeah, I thought season two was pretty good, two, I thought season two was pretty good, I liked the storyline with Callie, Robert, and Sophia, and, and their relationship, I liked, I liked the Jesus and Emma relationship, but I liked, I liked the Jaylee relationship, I hope Gemma gets back together in season three, I don't know, yeah. I'm talking about the whole Jesus thing, the, you know, the casting of Jesus, why they changed the actor from J.K. Austin to Noah Centineo in season three, and I get to it. I'll talk about the first episode, when I talk about the first episode, 
I'm talking about change how he's just gone. Then when he, yeah. But anyway, I really enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed the season. The season, I can't really just said the season isn't that great of a season. I think season one's better. It had better story, better character. Season two did have better story and better character. At least season two with King Anna from Anna Anna, whatever her name is. Your game here from her season one appearances. I liked that. I yeah. I liked how they finally arrested Liam Olmstead. That's one thing I liked about the last episode. How they were how they threw him in prison for him to never come back. But yeah. So I thought the season was not that good. Every time we watch, we watch this show, season two just gets on my nerves. Like Mariana gets on my nerves in this season, better than season one, because in that season she wasn't annoying. This season she's annoying, good, and then annoying again. It's just like the people, the writing team when they were making this season, just couldn't choose what Mariana they want her to be. Like in season one, she season two, the first part of her story was her wanting to be proven to dance team, and when she realized that. That doesn't really matter. She goes back to being the cool Mariana that I really enjoy. But then when the Anne's baby is introduced, and she will definitely need to adopt them and want to adopt it. But that's really not her choice. She becomes annoying again. So I just didn't think that Mariana had you know, like a, the personality of Mariana this season. It's like they couldn't choose which Mariana they wanted her to be. She was annoying Mariana to cool Mariana to annoying Mariana again. Like it was just like they couldn't ch show. What Mariana they wanted. I liked her and Matt's relationship. I don't know. Did I like Zachiana in season one or Matiana in season two? At least with Matiana, Matiana stays a relationship. Zachiana was a season one exclusive thing. Matiana goes beyond the seasons and I'm glad about that. So in the Mariana relationship department, since Zachiana was only a season one exclusive relationship, I think the winner of the relationships for the Mar for, Matt Mar for the Mariana team is Mariana and Matt. For the Cali and for the Cali side, I know you don't do this, but for the Cali side, I would choose Brown because I like Wiley, but I know that if I choose Wyatt and Cali, my boy Wyatt and Cali. People will kind of be mad that I didn't choose Browley, so I'm going to choose Browley. And, of course, you know, my pick for the Jesus relationship is Jabba. <laughs> I did that with Jelly and all. They were not perfect together. Haley was a manipulative girlfriend. Jesus was being manipulated but didn't know it. He and Emma had a more stable relationship. Him and Lexi had a more stable relationship in season one. But for this season with the Jesus relationship, I picked Jemma because Jelly just wasn't it just wasn't executed perfectly. Haley Hines was good for her and Jesus' like relationship, but then when she became manipulative, she just didn't fit Jesus' relationship. So for, for this relationship battle, I choose Gemma. Find out in season three when that when I finish that season, who wins that relationship battle? Will, who will be on top for season three in the relationship department? Will it be Browley? Will it be Wiley? Will it be Will be Gemma. Fine for that one. But until then, may the fosters protect you. <laughs> but anyway, I'll see you guys on season three.